Dusty. Hello everybody, continuing saga of the Gardner engine. Um, today we're going to take a look at the alternator fitted to these engines. Um, this is a particular alternator, it's the AC5, a CAV AC5 alternator. And they're very often found on Gardner's, particularly the 6LXB, this engine here. The alternator fits in there into that recess like that, and it's held in place by a strong strap that comes across here. Then there's a shaft runs from here across to this auxiliary drive here. And this auxiliary drive can rotate at up to 1.8 times engine speed. So it's ample speed to get the, the AC5 working and charging current. Okay, we'll park it here now. We'll go across to the bench and we'll take a little bit look in more detail at the AC5 and how it works. Okay, the second part of the AC5 um, video. Just before we went on to that, I just wanted to show you an example of this is called a swung mount alternator. So by rotating the alternator about this axis here, we can change the tension in the belt. But with a shaft mounted alternator, as I explained before, you don't need that. So, first some theory, and I'll confess I'm really quite excited about showing you this. Here we have a magnet. Look, conventional magnet. And here we have a piece of wire. Now, if I pass that magnet past that piece of wire, it actually generates a voltage in this wire. Isn't that extraordinary? I can remember whenever I was a young man and I first realized this phenomena, I was completely bored over. It caused me to fall in love there and then with all things electrical and electrical engineering. If I can move a magnet past a wire, I can generate a voltage in it. Or to look at it the other way around, if I pass the wire past the magnet, which is the same thing, I'll also generate a voltage in this wire. An incredible phenomenon. Now, that's the first phenomenon. The second phenomenon is, if I pass an electric current through this wire, it becomes a magnet. There becomes associated with it a magnetic field. To me, those are two of the most extraordinary phenomena uh, um, ever to be discovered back in the in the old days by Michael Faraday and, and, and uh, his, his colleagues. So, if I can somehow uh, and organize a rotating magnetic field inside a coil of wire, I can generate a voltage. And that's exactly what we have in an AC5 alternator. Here we have a magnet. The magnet rotates inside that housing simultaneously inside this coil of wire so that's on there like that do you get it this is rotating and generates a voltage in these coils there's actually three voltages generated one there one there and one there and they all contribute so in order to bring about this magnet in here as I described to you in the second phenomena we have to pass an electric current through this coil in here that's actually a coil of wire inside there so we can pass an electric current in there we can generate a magnetic field which will be rotating now how do we do that how do we pass current into that wire whenever the wires themselves are moving we do that using these slip rings in here you see them okay and what we have is, we have these little carbon brushes here. So if we can pass an electric current down through there, it'll go down through those carbon brushes, down on into the slip rings down there, and into the coil. I hope you've got that. Okay. So this part here is known as the rotor. That's called the rotor. And this part here is called the stator. Now, it takes a wee bit of imagination here, but if you can imagine a magnet rotating inside here, the voltage that will be generated in these wires will not be constant. It goes up and down. In fact, it goes all the way positive and all the way negative. 
So these three voltages here will actually be like this. They'll have a sinusoidal waveform. So if you can imagine, unfortunately I only have two arms so I can only, I can only illustrate it with, with two of the coils, but you'll have to use your imagination. If you can imagine them going like that, those are the voltages. But for charging batteries, for use in a boat with radios or in your car to drive the windscreen wipers and the light, headlights and so on, we need DC, we need a steady constant voltage. Otherwise, um, the, uh, the equipment in the car or on the boat would become damaged. Now, how this is achieved <coughs> in the SC5 is there are diodes in here, here in this housing. And those diodes will only conduct electricity in the one direction. So the overall result of that is, whenever you use those diodes, those oscillating uh, voltages become steady. They become DC, the current's only flowing in the one way. And that's achieved using the diodes. So, so far so good. We've now got a nice steady uh, DC voltage. But how do we control the size of that voltage? Because the rotor will be rotating at 10 RPM one minute and at 3000 RPM the next minute. Uh, if we don't control that voltage, what will happen is the alternator will actually overcharge the batteries or the voltage will be too high, fuses will blow, all sorts of damage will be done. Now, how that's achieved is it's achieved using a rectifier, this little device here. And this little device here has on here an F terminal. And that F terminal controls the current flowing into the rotor. And that's what controls the voltage. That'll stop the voltage getting too high. I hope that's clear. Now, some ASC5s, I don't have one here to hand, but some of them actually have a regulator built in. It's built on the end here. And that leaves the whole thing a lot simpler. Um, I thought I had a complete AC5. Uh, I'll just pop and get a, a, a finished one. Just a second. This is a complete assembled AC5. And you can see here, look, there's the F terminal um, there. There's another terminal here, which is used for the ignition light. Whenever the alternator comes up to speed, it'll put the ignition light out. And we'll shoot another little vo video after this one to show you that happening. Okay. Um, I can't uh, go much further without mentioning the dynamo. The dynamo preceded the, <clears throat> the alternator and this is an example of a dynamo, much smaller. They don't produce as much current, they're not as efficient and there's all sorts of technical reasons for that. Again the voltage inside here is AC but it's converted to DC using this um, commutator in here which is essentially the same thing as the slip rings that I showed you before, but there's lots of little slots in them. I hope you can see those slots. And those slots have the effect of changing the individual AC voltages inside here to, to DC. Now, dynamos are very much gone out of fashion uh, because A, they don't produce as much current, uh, and B, because people say the commutator gives bother, but in fact it doesn't. They're really very reliable. They don't give any bother at all. And in fact, in the garden, it's very difficult to get um, <coughs> a, 24, a 24 volt dynamo that's physically the right size. Here we have an example. Uh, this is used, I think, on the Model T Ford originally, but um, I designed this little bracket here which enables us to mount this um, <clears throat> on the shaft, on the auxiliary shaft, on the gardener, as we do with the SC5. 
very useful if for some reason you need to use a dynamo. And I think I explained that in another video that the auxiliary shaft on the, on the gardener sometimes doesn't go round fast enough for it to drive uh, an alternator. An, an alternator will only kick in at a certain RPM, below that it won't, it won't charge. Okay, um, I think, what else have I got to tell you? Um, the other models, the AC7 is just a bigger version of this. Uh, there's also a 203 which is a huge um, alternator that's used on buses and things. Uh, I'll show you a photograph of that there shortly. Um, that's okay. We'll stop at this point and we'll go and we'll take a look at a test bench where you can actually see the AC5 working. Here we have a very simple rig which I have set up just to illustrate how the AC5 works in practice. It's just a very simple, I know it's a bit Heath Robinson, but it's just for the sake of this video. What we have here is a washing machine motor, uh, which is 240 volts, and it rotates at a very high speed, very tough, rugged, very versatile little motor, super job. You can use them for, um, as drills and, and as, uh, for polishing copper and all sorts of things. Here we've got the, the 440 regulator that I explained to you before. This stops the AC5 alternator from overcharging the batteries. I'm not actually using batteries in this instance. I'm actually using a little simple 24 volt power pack. It has 240 volts coming in and 24 volt DC coming out. This red light is on here because you can imagine you've just got into your vehicle and you've turned on the ignition or your boat or whatever. So if I started the, the uh, wash machine motor, and gradually build up the speed. I hope you can still hear me now above the racket here. But as the speed comes up, and up, and up, and up, and up, it puts the light out. So we know now that that, that um, alternator is working fine. We'll just do it one more time, just for fun. Okay, super job. This is an example of an old six inch dynamos uh, as used in old gardeners and Rolls Royces and similar engines. This is an example of a CAV203 alternator. This is a real beast and alternator used in buses where uh, there's a lot of demand for electric power. <laughs>